Hello, Spring Hill family. Welcome to worship. We're the Thomases. I'm Charlie. I'm Lindsay. I'm Caleb. Thank you for joining us today. Please join us as we sing to our Lord.
We are so blessed, and as a part of worship, we can give back to God from the many blessings He has bestowed upon us. Your giving helps Spring Hill bring hope, share Christ, and impact the world. There are several easy ways you can do this. In person, you can give tithes during your small group hours or during church hours at the church office. Online, through the giving link on our church website, through the mail to Spring Hill Street address. Use bill pay through your bank, through the giving link on the Uversion app on your smartphone. Using the QR code on your screen or on our website or in person. By texting GIVE to 434-423-5300 right from your phone. Will you pray with us? Father, we recognize the many and abundant blessings you have given us. And we just thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercies every day. Great is your faithfulness, and we appreciate all that you do for us. We just ask that you bless everyone here listening to this message, and that you just be with us throughout our days and in the weeks ahead. Thank you for your loving kindness always, and use this to further your kingdom in all ways. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. So, I'm just finishing up my lunch, and I have a couple of things that are left. I've got a cookie. And as you can see, only half, because I've eaten half of it already. So does that mean that I've eaten half, oh man, or yes, I still have half left? I think I'm gonna go with the second part because I have half left and I'm going to enjoy it. And how about my cup here? This is my water I'm finishing up. Is my water half empty? I've already drank half of it. Or is it half full? I still have half of my water left. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about having a critical spirit and what does that mean, right? And sometimes it's all about the way we perceive things. So to get us started, I have a game. I know, you know that I like games, right? So on the next few screens, there's going to be some pictures and it's all about how you perceive these pictures. So in each picture, there's going to be one thing or another. And your job is to see if you can figure them out. See what you see. OK, so I'm going to let you guys play the game and I will be back shortly. do with the game? Were you able to see both? I know for me, it was a little hard to be able to see both, right? Once I saw the one thing that I was kind of staring at, it was hard to unsee it and see the other one. And this kind of brings us back to what we're going to talk about today, right? We're talking about our critical spirit. And what that means is how we maybe perceive things one way, 
somebody else might see it totally different. Going back to my cup example for, you know, as an example, half full, half empty. I don't know. It all depends on how you see it. And, you know, God wants us to not be what I would call a negative Nancy. Have you guys ever been around somebody like that? Yeah, they're not super fun to be around. Shh, don't tell me who it is. I don't want to know, okay? You just keep it to yourself. But so God is saying, why is it important that we don't have that critical spirit? What can it do if we do? Well, it's going to hinder our relationship with him. It's going to hinder our relationship with other people. Um, and one of God's things that he really wants us to do, right, is to love other people, no matter what they do to us, right? Love your enemies. We're going to read a verse from um, 1 Peter, and it is chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And in this verse, it says, Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Right? So when it comes to our critical spirit, it's really important for us to not judge people, but instead give maybe people, friends, maybe your family, anybody got brothers and sisters, come on, you know what I'm talking about. So instead of being quick to judge them or quick to maybe be a little critical of them, maybe what God is asking us to do is to show that person a little bit of grace. Maybe we don't know everything that's going on in that person's life that's making them act a certain way. But we as Christians are called to love God and to love each other. And one of the ways that we can do that is by not having a critical spirit. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. In late 1976, a sitcom involving puppets launched, and it was called The Muppet Show. It became very popular and lasted for five seasons. Two characters that were very, very, very popular on the show, even though the show was fantastic in itself, these two men kind of stole the show because they were sarcastic, 
They would put people down. They would put the cast of the show down as a part of the show and they were a part of the cast. They were critical. They were like the live critics on the Muppet Show and the people who put the Muppet Show together knew that they could not take these men off of the show or the ratings would go down. Even though the show itself was fantastic and the, the puppets would interact with live guests and it was just a great show, but these men being sarcastic, critical, putting others down were a major part of this show because of their criticism. In preparing this message, I came across this cartoon that's behind me on the screen. Everyone's a critic, he is spray painted. And then, oh, you forgot the apostrophe. <laughs> so there's the critic, everyone's a critic. And when somebody says something negative about someone or about you, we oftentimes might reply, or if they're critical, we'll say, well, well everyone's a critic. I mean, on Monday morning after the NFL football games, everyone's a critic or everyone's a, a Monday coach. And at the local basketball games, everyone's a critic of the referee and, and other sporting events. And so this whole critic thing and being critical is very real for us as human beings. And as we walk through this new series and in today's message, I want to encourage all of us to allow God to help us. <laughs> allow God to help us. So this series, this new series, that's gonna take us up to Easter Sunday is called God Help Me. You can text right now, 434-423-5300. 434-423-5300. Grab your phone, you can text right now that number and just put connect. Just text connect, the word connect, right there. And we'll, we'll get in touch with you and you can become uh, relating to us, start relating to us and God will help us and God can help you. Or you can even scan now a little QR code that's on our website and that'll get you connected to us because no matter where you are and as you're worshiping online, as you're growing in Christ online, you can connect with us virtually. You can con connect with us in the world of text messaging. Uh, we want to connect with one another. And we're glad that you have chosen to worship online. And so God help me is the series. In today's message, God help me with my critical spirit. God help me with my critical spirit. The fact is many people who watch the Muppet show and still watch it on various channels relate to the two old men because we're critical. We're wired to be critical. Since the fall of mankind and a hard fall it was, we have been critical. We're critical of God. We're critical of ourselves. We're critical of organizations and people. We're just, we have this tendency to lean into being critical, but it doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. So God, Help me with my critical spirit. Let's look at just a few stories to walk through this whole critical spirit, critical attitude. In the book of Genesis, which means beginning, God creates man and woman and he puts them in the perfect place. The pristine atmosphere. It has the new car smell all the time. It has the smell of spring all the time. It has that smell of like the smell after that beautiful rain all the time. It's like you have lighted that scented candle and lit that scented candle and it's just that beautiful aroma and beautiful view and it's just fantastic. And yet they become unhappy and they move into what is called sin. And God comes strolling into the garden looking for them and they have hidden themselves. They have become critical of themselves. They have become critical of one another and then they actually become critical of God. Thank God that he is gracious and he redeems them. 
But here's just one verse of this story. This is Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Because God is saying, hey, Adam, I'm here for our daily walk. Where are you? And Adam says, I've hidden. God says, well, why so? Because this woman that you gave me cost me to eat, uh, called me to eat this. And now I see some things that I shouldn't be seeing. So this man blames God. He blames the woman. The woman blames the serpent. And it goes on and they become critical of one another. So much so that when the two brothers are born from Adam and Eve, they are born into this critical world. And in a, in, in a worship service, following a worship service, one of the brothers takes the lives of the other because he's critical of him. This is real to us. In the story found in Exodus, the book of Exodus, there's a story of a man by the name of Moses. God uses Moses to call people out of captivity. He calls people into freedom. He calls people who are burdened down into being set free so that they can make decisions for themselves. And before they move into this whole new realm of freedom, there's some difficulties. And here's what these people say to Moses as he's leading them into freedom. They are out of captivity. They have plundered the city. They are carrying wealth upon wealth. They're moving into a new man. And here's what these people say when some difficulties come their way. Exodus chapter four, verse 12. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, Moses. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And these people grumble. These people are critical. These people are negative. So much so that God makes them wander in a desert for 40 years so that many of them would die and not see the freedom that God had called them into. This critical thing is real to us. In a story found in the Bible in 2 Kings, Second Kings, there's a story of a man who's a, a military commander. He's a powerful man. He develops leprosy. In the Bible, leprosy was a death sentence. In the Bible, leprosy was a quarantine sentence. In the Bible, leprosy was an isolation sentence. We recognize those words, don't we? And Nahum was doing everything he could to be cured, and he heard about a prophet. So he called the prophet, relates to this prophet, and this prophet's not from his land, this prophet is not of his people, this prophet's not of his lineage, but he's willing to try anything. And he's a great commander, so he sends word to the prophet, and the prophet sends back, here's what you need to do. Well, Nahum becomes mad. Naaman, Naaman, I'm sorry, Naaman becomes mad and angry. Because he's like, here's what he says, okay? This is a chance for him to be healed. And here's what he says in response to what the prophet says to do. Second Kings chapter five, verse 11. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Eventually, Naaman does what the prophet says, and he's healed. Hint. His pride would have kept him from being healed. His critical spirit would have kept him from being healed, except a young servant girl, very humble young servant girl, comes to Naaman and says, Naaman, you've tried everything else. Why not do what the prophet suggested? So this critical spirit is very real to us. And so here's the prayer. Here's today's title of the message. God, help me with my critical spirit. God, help me with my critical spirit. You see, when you and I live with a critical spirit, we become negative and hurtful. Negative about life, negative about ourselves, 
negative about circumstances, negative about other people. When you and I live in this critical spirit that we're wired to kind of live in because of the fall of mankind and the fall of humankind, we become hurtful, hurtful to ourselves. Young teenage girls deal with physical appearance issues. People deal with all types of issues because of the critical negative self-talk. And not only does it hurt ourselves, we hurt other people around us because we're not feeling good about ourselves, so we don't want anybody else to feel good about themselves. So when we live in this critical spirit, we're negative and we're hurtful. When we have the Christ spirit, the spirit of God, when we allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, we become positive and helpful. We become positive about what God can and is doing in our lives. We become positive no matter our circumstances. We become positive about the opportunity to have a family and be with that family, even though they might be a little strange. And they're saying the same thing about you and me right now. But we become positive about our self-image, positive about the future, positive because as a follower of Christ, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your future is a preferred future and it's called heaven, the new Eden, the new garden, this place that always smells like the new car smell. This place that always smells like that fresh aroma after that beautiful rain. This place that is magnificent. And so when we experience the Christ spirit, we're positive and we're helpful. And because I'm a human being and because you're a human being, here's something I know about you. You like to be around people who are positive and helpful. So do I. So may we move away from our critical spirit by God's power and move into the Christ spirit. Here's the prayer put in a different way. God, everyone is a critic. Through your power, help me be Christ-like. God, everyone's a critic. Through your power, help me be Christ-like. Would you say that prayer with me right now? Let's just offer that to God. Don't bow your heads. Don't close your eyes. Look right here behind me. Let's say this prayer together. I want you to say it out loud. You're like, wait a minute, I'm worshiping by myself. And if I talk to myself, that's kind of weird. You're not talking to you. You're calling out to God. So here it is. Say it with me. God, everyone's a critic. Through your power, help me be Christ-like. And just, God, help me with my critical spirit. And then you and I can experience this positivity. We can experience this new life in Christ. We can experience this new energy, this new attitude of helping people come along in their lives. And we can do that because God will empower us through what is called Easter. Easter Sunday is 42 days away. But the great news is Easter Sunday is every day in the life of a follower of Christ. And so if you are looking for power, maybe COVID has zapped you of your energy. God can help you with that. And we as a church can help introduce you to that God. Maybe you're a little distraught right now and you're like, Easter, I can't even, I can't even make it past this week. I'm just trying to get to the weekend so I can have a beer. We want you to know that you can be drunk in the spirit and, and God can fill you in ways that you cannot fathom. So encounter God. Hit that QR code on our website. Text us at 434-423-5300. And we want to help you live in this resurrection power. And in this resurrection power, in this power of Christ, in this power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can say, God, everyone's a critic. Through your power, help me be Christ-like. Help me live in the Christ spirit. And as we do that, here's what God might just say to us as he begins to answer us in that prayer. Realize you are forgiven big time. You want to move past being critical towards yourself and towards other people? Realize that you yourself, by God, if you've accepted God's forgiveness, you and I have been forgiven big time. 
We stand guilty before God and Jesus stands right in the middle of it saying, Father in heaven, holy God, they've accepted me. Their slate is wiped clean. And just remember, you've got some things about yourself that people could be critical about and we don't like that. So let's be careful and just realize that everyone has done some things wrong and everyone does some things that bother us, including you. You know, there's this phrase, I'm okay and you're okay. Everybody's okay. Uh, if you believe that, you've got your head in the sand. So just realize you've been forgiven big time. Recognize your own faults. Oh man, I'm not trying to get personal here. All right. I'm not asking somebody else to recognize your faults. You recognize your faults. Don't stay there. Don't dwell on them, but just know that you've got some faults also. It's interesting that we will be critical of other people, but rarely will we criticize our own faults. See, grace does away with that. Mercy does away with that. God's love does away with that. And we realize we are created in his image and therefore our neighbors are created in his image and they're beautiful. And God wants to do something in our lives. Remember, you do not like people to be critical of you. So true. We like people to help us. <laughs> we like people to say positive things about us. Hey, you're looking glasses. Hey, that's a nice shirt. Hey, I like those shoes. Hey, I like that car. Hey, that was a great sermon. <laughs> we like people to say positive things. We like people to be helpful. So remember, you don't like it when people are critical of you. And the Bible says this. This is the golden rule that we used to teach in public schools. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's what Jesus taught us. Another one, and this is really the most important one of all of these. Realize just how important you are to God. Realize how important you are to God. You are vital to the kingdom of God. Your life counts. God wants to lift you up. God wants to move in and through you to touch the lives of others. And when we understand how special we are to God, we will realize that we do not have to put others down to feel good about ourselves, and that's called being critical. So realize that God loves you and cares for you. And then repeat this prayer. God, help me. God, help me. God. Everyone's a critic. Through your power, move in my life and help me live in the Christ spirit. And when that happens, and it can, I want to show you just a little bit of the fruit. I want to show you just a few of the results. I want to show you some glorious scriptures of the Christ spirit over the critical spirit. Here's John chapter 17, verse 11. It's up on the screen. You can find this on version on the app that we use. You can take your Bible right now and go there. John chapter 17, verse 11. John chapter 17, verse 11. This is Jesus Christ. Scott Burks, who spoke last week, referred to this. And listen to this just little piece of a lengthy, beautiful prayer. I will remain in the world, Jesus said, no longer. But they, the disciples, they're in the world. And Father, I'm coming to you. So Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. So Father, give them the power and protect them by your power. He wants to empower you right now. And God, do this so that they will be one. You don't see anything about criticism here. By the way, the disciples were often critical of one another. They were often critical of society. I mean, at one time, Jesus walks into an area and they're like, Jesus, call down fire and brimstone on this place. I would say that's pretty critical. And Jesus says, no, I want you to be empowered and I want you to be, live as one. I want you to know the God that, that has sent me and how powerful and loving and how unified he is. And then Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, the Apostle Paul writing to a group of people who are new to Christianity. These people have lived for themselves. 
These people are critical of the gov government. These people are critical of their neighbors. And now they've accepted Christ and, and God is changing their lives. And Paul says, look, now that you're in this, here's some things that, that God wants to do in you. Love must be sincere, Romans chapter 12, verse nine and following. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Listen to this one verse, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Nowhere in this description do you see criticism and being critical. Thank God that that's what we're a part of when we accept Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. I want to read this to you because this is, this is about different people with different gifts and different, uh, different abilities and, and different backgrounds coming together and God doing a work in their life. And listen to this. This is glorious. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. And then he goes down a, a list of how we're different. But he says, but we are in this together. And it's hard to be in something together and be critical of one another. And then here's a few other verses, just two others, and then we'll move in to taking communion and living in that Christ spirit. First Peter chapter three, verses eight and nine. Finally, it's up on the screen behind me. All of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, Peter says to these followers of Christ who are being empowered by God. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because this is who you were called to so that you may inherit the blessing itself. So if you want to inherit a blessing from God, be positive, be helpful, and bless other people. If you want to inherit a curse from God, be critical, be negative, and be hurtful. I mean, that's just what the Bible's teaching us here. And then last, Hebrews 10, 24, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. You can look at this list and you will not find criticism or being critical in there at all. We are to help one another. We are to encourage one another. We are to bless one another. We are to come alongside one another. There's many passages that talk about those who are weaker, those who are stronger, you help those weaker ones come along. Don't be critical of them. Move past this whole critical thing and let's let God's spirit work in us. And here's a story of the Christ spirit. In our church, we have multiple small, small groups. Some meet in person, some of them are currently meeting virtually. Some are in person and virtually. And they help each other grow in Christ. And part of our ministry here is we want small groups to minister to the community and do some missions work in the local community. And one group just recently, the group leader said, hey, we need some goods for the senior adult ministry that or the senior adult service, the senior adult group here in Greene County. And so next week, could y'all bring some of these items and she thought maybe a bag full would come in, but bags and bags and bags and bags full came in. Items such as dishcloths and dish towels, beautiful decorated soap dispensers, these little word books and word puzzles, toothpaste and toothbrushes and various types of soaps and things. And, and the small group just loaded this leader down the leader said there's so much she had to spread it out in her room so that she could sort out everything. In seven days, these people could have been critical. Oh, we don't need to help those people. Can't someone else help them? Why do they need help? They should have got more retirement when they were, or they should have put more money aside for retirement. We can be critical. Anyway. Everyone's a critic, but God 
Move in us so that we can have the Christ spirit. And this Christ spirit blessed senior adults right here in Green County because Jesus has changed these ladies' lives. And so thank God for the Christ spirit. And as we take communion, here's the prayer. God, help me with my critical spirit. I want to be positive. I want to be an encourager. I want to live a Christ spirit life. And so God, help me with my critical spirit as we take communion together and then walk through this closing song. May God move in our lives. Hey, Spring Hill family. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul writes that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Spring Hill family, communion is a time of remembrance. So as we take communion together, take a moment to reflect on the sacrifices that Jesus made for us. And take the bread together. And let's take the juice together. And now let's pray. Father, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for what you did on the cross so that we may have a relationship with you. Help us to honor you as we walk through our days. Amen.
Thank you very much for choosing to worship with us. We greatly appreciate it. We hope you were encouraged. We hope that your life was touched. Send us a text message, 434-423-5300. Scan that QR code. Get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. We want you to become a part of what God is doing in and through us to impact the world, to share Christ, to bring hope. We want you to be a part of this beautiful, glorious, wonderful thing. Would you bow your heads briefly for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that we can be positive. Thank you that we can be helpful in your power, in your grace, and in your love. In Christ's name I pray, amen.